Welcome to the State of AAA Games 2020. Now, the previous uh, 2019 version that I did of this was the State of the Game Industry, um, but this year I thought it would be good to talk specifically about AAA games. And uh, the reasons why are myriad, and you'll understand pretty quickly. Um, so let's let's get into it. So uh, games as a service and how game players continue to get fucked and how devs F themselves. Um, the problem with games as a service is that you're treating players as consumers and numbers instead of human beings. And uh, the, the problem with these big corporate entities and executives is that they don't recognize that they're doing that. <clears throat> and so everything becomes this burning fire that destroys everything um, when it comes to getting a game out and making sure that it's high quality enough that people are going to enjoy it. Um, the, all the game design ends up being done with transactions in mind. Um, sometimes this comes from the executive level, putting pressure on the studio that they have to have microtransactions and they have to meet certain quotas. Other times, it's the story that gets sacrificed. Uh, we saw that in a number of games, so this wasn't in 2020, with like Anthem being split apart and torn apart. If you didn't watch my State of the Game Industry 2019 video, I highly recommend you go into that video and, and watch it in full, because I go into deep detail about how games as a service is destroying the game industry and we need to move to another model. So well, why do we have this? Well. AAA game companies require AAA profits. And it's all about the exec executives maximizing their quarterly revenue. And so you get games released on certain dates in order to have big quarterly sales. Everyone wants to make Christmas. Everyone wants to release for summer. Uh, and that causes them to push these games out a little bit early uh, or sometimes way too early in order to make these quarterly profit uh, time periods in order to look good on the on the books because the investors expect a certain return on their money at certain times and if they don't get it they get upset and then when when that happens the game devs concerns are totally overwritten maybe they promise bonuses if they get the delivery correct but the problem with that is that uh, throwing money at a problem like that doesn't help like a game developer is not going to suddenly become a thousand percent more efficient just because there's a ten thousand dollar bonus on the line. Um, it just doesn't work that way. You have to find someone who'd have to hire new people who have the experience, and then they have to catch up to speed. So it's it's irrelevant. You can't just throw money at the problem and expect it to come out faster and or better. And the, the end result of this is that we all suffer. But if you look at the forecast. Um, for the premium games market, um, you can see that's going up every year. It started; it's gaining like at least five hundred million um, in PC. It went down a bit. I'm not a hundred percent sure what that's about. That that would be a whole other investigation. But overall, it's on an upward growth trend, especially on premium consoles. And and the issue is that despite the shortcomings that all of us as players um, have seen uh, when they release these games. We still give them our money. So <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077 came out. Uh, there's a good article on inverse.com by Thomas Franzes. Uh, you should read that. Uh, there were 8 million pre-orders uh, and overall they've done 13 million in sales. Now that doesn't take into account the returns, but I'm imagining it doesn't really matter because once you're in the millions of sales, you, you've already done quite well. Um, but because of their rushed release, it's resulted in four class action lawsuits, a 53 Metacritic for the PS4, a 61 Metacritic for the Xbox One, a, a shit ton of pissed off fans, and even their loyalists are becoming skeptical. It's like, then you get these articles like, is this the end of CD Projekt Red being good for the consumers? And, and ultimately, this comes down to an executive at the top level made a decision and demanded that the game come out on this time scale. I'm still not 100% sure if it's the CEO to blame or someone on the board of directors or some someone who owns a shit ton of Cyberpunk uh, or uh, CD Projekt Red stock. It could be any of those things. But either way, what you end up with is a game that released when it shouldn't have 
and um, there's absolutely no excuse for how it was on the PS4 and the Xbox One. It is literally unplayable for the majority of players, and so the class actions are perfectly justified, and I'm very curious to see how those end up. I imagine it will just result in refunds for everyone, but we'll, we will see. Here's a game, Hades, which released officially in September of this year, but um, was in early access for almost two years before that. Um, so it's not officially AAA, uh, but it demonstrates how a AAA game could succeed without royally pissing people off. And, you know, I'm thankful that we have indie devs like Supergiant Games uh, that are doing things like this because they're demonstrating how AAA could make a game without pissing everyone off. So what, what does early access do? So it allows the people who are interested in the game to, who don't care about the final polish and who don't care about the, you know, the complete story. They just want to play something new and try it out. It allows them to get in early and sort of give feedback and gives the bunch of data to the developer. And it starts to build this like slow roll of hype. It's like, ah, I see how this game could be good with the num like another layer of polish or multiple layers of polish, you know. Um, and it allows players the choice. Those who don't mind an alpha or a beta experience, they can purchase the game early and get to experience it, often at a discount as well, um, knowing that the game will eventually be a more polished product. In the case of me, I purchased an early access but chose not to play because I've loved every Supergiant game before this, uh, not except for Pyre, but I loved all their other games. Um, and so I knew that I was going to eventually have a fun experience uh, or at least an experience that I would enjoy. So I bought an early access in order to get the discounted price. And then I played when it was full release and the whole story was there and it was an amazing experience for me. I've really enjoyed playing it. So when the game finally does release, like they did in September, you already have a built-in audience and they're already hyping the game and some of them have been playing for a long time and they can tell people sort of like, if you like these types of games, you're 100% going to like this game because they've already... Like, you don't have to rely on reviewers at that point. You've already built a base that's going to go, I enjoyed this game and now it's out and I recommend it to everyone. I think that this is the model that AAA needs to follow. They need to go into this sort of early access. So let's, let's, let's get it down to the brass tacks here. Um, number one thing that you as a player, a, a game purchaser can do, stop pre-ordering games. Don't pre-order the games anymore. Demand something for your money. And in my opinion, the solution to that is, triple, is early access. If a AAA game has an early access period, you can go play it. It's the same effectively as pre-ordering, except you actually get to play the game. And then at that point, if there's something wrong in the early access period with the overall game, um, then you, you can push back. You have a chance, an opportunity there to improve the game. And this sort of gets rid of the cycle of overhype and then a bug-ridden release and then a disappointed fan base and then a series of rushed patches and fixes that don't work. So the, the obvious solution to AAA's current problem of the cycle of overhype, bug-ridden releases, and then just a, a myriad of patches that uh, sometimes frustrate their players, because even when you start patching these bugs, the players are not necessarily getting their thing that they're upset about focused on because some things take longer than other. And so you just get this long cycle of negative feedback and uh, attacks against the game and Metacritic bombings and all this shit. Whereas in early access, players know exactly what they're getting into and um, then then they love you for, for doing what they say. <laughs> But there, there are some problems with early access. So for consoles, they just don't do early access. There's no way, like, we have the potential to do it. You can do a digital early release now on consoles. It's just that I don't think uh, Sony and Nintendo and uh, Microsoft allow for this, and they should. They absolutely should, because it's going to help them too. Um, Imagine if Cyberpunk 2077 had an early access phase for PS4 and Xbox One. There's no way they would have released with the way that things were playing uh, on those consoles. 
and thus they would have avoided the entire fiasco. Um, so I hope that Microsoft, I mean, they're not going to listen to me, but I hope that Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo all consider this concept of early access and moving it on, uh, adopting it for, for console systems. Um, otherwise, they're always going to have the worst version because PC has the ability to do early access and often game studios do do early access or at least some form of demo or beta and then they get feedback from that and that changes what they end up shipping. Um, it also does open the game to a negative feedback loop. That is that there's a small group of players who might go into early access and start dictating what they want uh, and it might not be what's best for the game. And then the last problem is the spoilers. So if you're trying to protect your storyline and stuff like that, or if you've written part of a storyline and part of it's in there and people start guessing the ending to the game, that can be upsetting to devs, but I, you know what? Get over it. If people guess the ending to your game, who cares? Just, just do it. <laughs> because uh, no amount of spoiler is going to ruin the game as compared to releasing and it being a buggy piece of shit. So that's just how it is. There is one alternative to early access that I was thinking of. And um, this is simply uh, up to each studio to have a higher standardized requirement for release, to have the discipline not to release before that, to ignore the quarterly deadlines. And some studios have done this successfully in the past. Blizzard Entertainment, for example, when I worked there, was very good about saying it's done when it's done and we did not try to force it out early. Um, you know, we did have zero day patches and things like that, and things have gotten progressively worse since then, but it's still a studio that largely adheres to the idea that if the game is not good enough for us internally, then we won't ship it out. And that in the past has been a large part due to quality assurance feedback. And so I'm saying make QA great again. Um, I think every studio should have its own quality assurance. Uh, department and that they it should consist of not just um, people who are good at QA, which is sort of its own discipline, but also people who are game players and enthusiasts for the game, um, because that will give you a lot. Like if they're reacting negatively, then you know, stop it, <laughs> don't ship. So that's that's all I have to say about the the state of the AAA game industry currently. I really want to push this idea of early access. If you think it's a good idea, I recommend actually going to various forums for whatever studios you are a fan of and posting there like, hey, I'd like to see an early access for your next big game. Hey, I want to have early access on consoles. Maybe you can, maybe you know people at Sony or Nintendo, <laughs> maybe you can message them. If other game developers are watching uh, this video, please contact Microsoft and contact uh, Sony and contact Nintendo and demand that they have a digital early access availability for your game. Because I, I, I've seen the future and it is early access. Hades has sort of proven the model in the best way possible. And I think all AAA games should adopt it. And I think it will lead to better communication with the player base, better final releases, and it will prevent negative feedback loops that you get from uh, early releases or trying to make a quarterly deadline. And while I understand that uh, quarterly deadlines are good for looking on, you know, it, it's important to meet them to look good on paper in terms of the value of the company, but ultimately they are destroying the value of your company by undermining your the, the way that people view your company. So that's all I have to say about that. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, have a pleasant day.